The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and uh, welcome to Lowe's More in the Blueprint. Man, as you can see, man, I'm not inside today, but I'm actually, I want to wish everybody a happy Independence Day, happy 4th of July, uh, whichever you choose. And I'm down in here in sunny Fayetteville, North Carolina, both my brothers and and family down here in, um, in Fayetteville or Rayford, uh, North Carolina. And we, we actually, you know, we kind of celebrate uh, 4th of July, a few days, uh, where we, we, today is our fish fry, our family fish fry. Um, you know, everybody's in the back. I don't know if you hear a little background music, people in the garage, people are in the, in the house, people in the back. And, uh, I don't want to get y'all upset, but you know, we got fried fish, right. And, uh, we got fried for frog legs and, we have these pockets called seafood pockets with shrimp, right? Uh, we have shrimp and vegetable uh, and fish sea, uh, uh, fish pockets. You know, they're in the pockets. You just let that butter melt or and that olive oil just met that melt down on it. And man, you just let it just kind of boil uh, inside the little pocket. And man, then you just cut it open and man, it started eating. So I don't want to make y'all jealous. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time. And you know, a few weeks ago, I was celebrating my first year anniversary, and my two guests, uh, you know, uh, are Richard Douglas and and Steve Vaccaro. Um, they were on the show, and they were outside. And I promised for Fourth of July, man, that I would be outside. And so I'm outside on the front porch. Everybody's in the house and in the back. And I mean. You know, this is just awesome. It's sunny here. And I heard in New York it's raining a little bit, but we're going to send the sunshine your way uh, so you can enjoy 4th of July on tomorrow. So I I'm really excited. Uh, you know, been trying to get uh, my guest uh, a few times on. Uh, you know, he pro helps me to produce the show. Uh, the he's done a lot of wonderful things. And, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to him tonight. I mean, he has an awesome story. He's helped me out plenty of time at the Boys and Girls Club in Mount Vernon. And so I'm just looking forward to it. And, and I'm excited, man, uh, to be outside today. I want to wish you guys, again, again, a happy Independence Day, a happy 4th of July. Man, it's nothing, you know, coming out the pandemic and, you know, still making adjustments. Still stay, I can say to you, still stay safety you know safety safe it's important uh when need be to be socially distanced to have your mask on i mean i've been i've been vaccinated my whole family has been been vaccinated and so we you know we're down here uh enjoying it we probably got between 40 and 50 uh people here at the house we're gonna have even more tomorrow at my other brother's house man where we're just gonna do it up so I want to jump right into it again. Happy Independence Day and and uh, enjoy, enjoy family, enjoy every moment that you have uh, uh, to spend with family. I mean, my lifeline is family. And that's when I started the show. I started out with the importance of family and extended family. So in and, and extended family means friends. Right. I don't call brother in laws and sister in laws. I don't call them. I don't call them uh, friends. I call them family. They not extend the family. But we have made friends. Right. That have become a part of our family. I say that's our extended family. Right. And, and, and some some of them are just family. So enjoy it. Right. Celebrate it. Stay safe. 
and and be blessed. Let me jump right into this, man. I want to start off with the with the book of the week. As a man think of by James Allen. Man, this is a this is a heavy, heavy, heavy book. Uh, scripturally in the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right? It's not thinking with your mind. Right? See, if you got if you if you dealing with some some real serious uh, things with your mind, right? It's not really in your mind. Right? It has when you start to deal with depression and mental health and and you know uh, anxiety and all those different things. Right? That's because what's in our mind has gotten into our heart, right? And so it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? So in, you have to change what's in your heart in order to change what's in your mind. So this is a real good book here. Um, you know, I recommend it highly. Make sure you get it, As a Man Thinketh, uh, by James Allen. And, you know, our... our you know, make sure you read. I put in there, make sure you read. I call it a must read. Read the Declaration of Independence. You need to know, you need to know why there's an Independence Day, why there's a 4th of July. You need all men are created equal, right? All men are created equal, man, right? Uh, regardless of race and creed and color, right? We are all created equal and the De declaration of independence uh speaks about that so make sure that's a must read i mean and even when i graduated high school i graduated 1976 right and then and then uh the declaration of independence was done 1776 so please you know take a look at it make sure you read it and and uh and and you know, and just enjoy it. Know, know your history. And so the key word today is independence, right? Many of us can be dependent or we can be independent, right? In some instances, man, when you, you can go out and get an education, whether you get a high school degree, uh, you know, a high school diploma, high uh, college degree, and, you, you know, master's, doctorate, whatever you get, right? Sometimes you can become dependent. Right. Really, education is to make you independent. Right. Independent. When you're independent means that, man, that you are self sufficient. I'm dependent. I'm not relying on anybody. Right. Because I become independent. Right. You want to be an independent thinker. You want to have an independent lifestyle. So that's the key word this week. Independence, because we in Independence Day. And so. Uh, next is from Hill Harper, Pierce Harper, affirmation moment. Right? Let's see here. We got it. Yeah. Don't forget freedom. Freedom on Independence Day. But the affirmation, right? Not the affirmation of Hill and Pierce Harper affirmation quote moment. It says, every day. In every way, I am becoming financially independent with the help of God. It will be, it will surely come every day. In every way, I am becoming financially independent with the help of God. I will surely, it will surely come. It will surely come, right? We want to be independent, right? And that's our moment. Um, so here's our move our music our music and movie of the week and one of the all-time great uh marvin gay what's going on man i love that song it you know it's so crazy about this song marvin wrote right because man it transcends it transcends time right and and man this, those words, man, you can look and ask yourself what's going on today. I mean, it, back when Marvin was younger, man, and, and you know, all the injustices were, were happening back then, man, that song was apropos, but also that song is apropos today. I mean, on, I mean, man, you could pick, tick, hey, do me a favor, you know, look it up on YouTube, pull it out, listen to it. 
and see, man, a whole lot hasn't changed from from back in the day. Right. We're still dealing with the same issues. And then, you know, one of the favorite movies is Independence Day. Right. Uh, awesome movie, man. Every in, every Independence Day, man, we usually pull you can pull out one and two and watch it and, and enjoy Will Smith and all and the guys. And then next, we're going to have a curiosity question at some point in the show. I'm going to ask Steve a curiosity question. So look forward to that. And and then I want to do a shout out to Rye Benjamin. Ma Vernon's own Rye Benjamin started out at Ma Vernon High School, broke records there and, and went on a full scholarship to UCLA and then had transferred over to uh, USC, then became a pro. And now he's going to be running in the four by four, 400. He's in the 400. And, and he, you know, he came, man, second highest lowest record in in the history and he's going to be running over over there and i'm excited i can't wait to see rye man last time we talked man he's talking about going pro signed with nike and now he's in the olympics rye congratulations man and then finally i got a, my godson man he was on the show a little while ago man look um he graduated from Dominican College uh, last weekend, man, he got a you know a little business out called Self Love. Jamal Johnson, we call him Bob, because my my daughter said that he didn't look like uh, his, he should be named Jamal, so they named him Bob. So Bob, congratulations, man, and man, I'm a, man, I'm excited for you. Uh, went to nursing school. He's going to be a nurse, and that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. I love you, man, and and uh, keep up the good work. And you know, coming soon next week, we got the gifted man. This young man is gifted. Milton Van is coming next week, man. I'm looking forward to it, Milton. It's going to be awesome, 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 man. I mean, I'm look really looking forward to it. And I, you know, I got some other special guests. I got a pro golfer on the following weekend, and then at the end of the month, I got Pastor. Jeffrey Willer is going to be on. And then in August, I'm having my good friend, Dr. Randy Clark is going to be on in August. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to not only tonight, but the future of the Blueprint podcast. And, and so let's let's get into this thing right now. Um, because it's Independence Day, I want to show you this video. And then I'm going to introduce a video for, for my guests and then we're going to just jump right into the conversation. So let's this Independence Day video. Let's check it out. My uh, great grandfather had been a slave. And when he was free, the first thing he did uh, he got married to the woman that he loved. So I know something about Jefferson history. And to come here uh, to his home and to reflect on what he said and what he did, it says something about the goodness of the American dream. That we all can come and move to a different place. We all live in the same house. Not just the American house, but the world house. And the truth that Jefferson wrote, they cannot be denied. We hold these truths to be self-evidence that all men, all men are created equal. Probably if it's around today, we know what you're saying when you saw men, all human. It doesn't matter whether you live in the American South or Midwest or whether you live in Africa or in Europe or in Asia or Central South America. All, all men, all humans are created equal. And, and, 
and no one should be denied certain basic rights. You know, because of the color of their skin, uh, of the gender, or whatever. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. All men are created equal. Um, before I introduce my guests, I want you to check out this. Uh, oh, well, I got little man here. Since it's a since it's Independence Day, say hello. You want to say hi to everybody? This is Dakota. This is my grandson. You want to say hi? Look, look over there. Say hi. Huh? 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 Yeah. 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 Love you, man. Go have some fun, man. Go have some fun. I want to show you a video of tonight's guest. Uh, I want to share this video with you. And so let's let's do it now. Let's show this. Say it loud and there's music playing. Say it soft and it's almost like praying. It's almost like praying. Bring in my my guest this evening, Mr. Steve Vaccaro. Hey, Lowe's, how's it What's going? Up? 
I, it's good, man. Hey, man, I'm in a little rhythm, man, too. That in, I see in, that. In Puerto Rico. <laughs> I had to spice it up a little bit. You're just a little too comfortable in that rocking chair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was awesome. Before we get into you, let's let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, because I've been to, uh, you know, I've been around the around the world, man. I mean, but uh, you know, I've been to Puerto Rico plenty of times, mm -hmm. and uh, man, I was really devastated um, by the, uh, you know, the storm that hit Puerto Rico. And I have, uh, you know, I had been there for a Boys and Girls Club conference. Mm -hmm. I had met a number of people at the boys club in Puerto Rico. And um, I have friends that are in Maryland that family was there. So I was constantly calling her about making sure that her family, her father and mother and everybody was okay. So uh, yeah, just, just a wonderful place. And you guys uh, had the opportunity to go over there and be a support during the, during a very crucial time so talk a little bit about that and also that how that video came along and man it's just hot yeah no it's a great video and thank you very much for inviting me on your great show i'm so blessed to have you part of our network because you know what the average podcast during the pandemic only lasted eight to ten shows eight to ten podcasts nationwide and you've been able to do it for a whole year so Man, you're doing a great job. So I'm so happy that um, it's taken off. You have a platform for so many great people, bringing family and friends together with faith. And it's just a blessing to be your friend, but to see that unfold on the screen week after week. And, you know, it's not Sunday, but it's Saturday night. So happy Independence Day. And thank you very much to all your viewers out there. But that, that video was very special because... Um, I, I have this show, uh, Chapters Wrap, for eight years, right? So before the pandemic in January, the earthquake hit Puerto Rico, right? It hit them in a big way. And I had been working with this group called Herbitos with Troops. And those are the guys there. They went to Puerto Rico maybe a week after the earthquake hit there. A lot of those folks in that picture are from Puerto Rico. That's Jose and Amy and Aggie and the whole crew, John Michael, everybody there. That's in Puerto Rico. We went to San Juan, all across Puerto Rico. They went first. I wasn't there. They went there to give back food, medical supplies, any items, hand-delivered it. What they did was they collected food and items here in New York. They would pack it up mail it to Puerto Rico, fly there, and then hand deliver it to all the places in Puerto Rico that authorities couldn't get to because sometimes it gets very political and they pick and choose who gets food and medical supplies. So they wanted to handle it their own. So when they came back, that whole crew and even more, when they came back, they came into my TV studio in Huntington and they talked about it. It was a couple of days after that they had went. And it was about 15 of them, and I'm sitting at the desk interviewing them, but seeing them, like, break down crying about what they witnessed because in Puerto Rico, the structures of the homes are solid concrete, and an earthquake, any shift in the earth can de be devastating. And even though it's a little crack in the foundation, they can't stay there. Unfortunately, we're seeing this in Miami, what happened there. When, when something happens, a tragedy they're left homeless, displaced, without food or medical supplies, electricity. So when they came back into my TV studio in Huntington, they had tears in their eyes, and they said they were going back. And they looked to me and to other people that I know to kind of help them promote what they were doing to gather up donations and supplies so they could bring it back. So we talked about that during that interview. But at the same time, something hit me, and I said, I, all of a sudden, I said, I want to go with you guys. I want to go the next time you go. Wow. I want to be there. I had never been to Puerto Rico before. And they looked at me like, this is live. They looked at me like, okay, sure, Steve. Um, but the next day, I got my plane ticket. I worked it out. So we went back. This is right before the pandemic. We went back February 2nd of 2020 and stayed for 12 days. And awesome. we, I flew there. And we went 
home to home in the mountains. We helped so many people and it was a, a true blessing, but it was one of the saddest things I ever had to see because you get connected with the people that are suffering. And, and then you, we stayed in a, in a home that was like two hours away. So every night, wherever we went, we had to drive two hours back to the, in the middle of the night to get there. But there were people devastated by that. And it left a lasting impact on me to do that. But those guys, some of them are in the military, some of them are officers, some of them are volunteering their services. They continue to do that. And it was a one shot deal for me and I want to go back with them, but there's so many things that they've been doing such a great job with that's, they call Herbie those with troops. They're based in Bayshore. I love those guys very much. And they made me part of their crew. And I was able to do as a psychologist, I was able to do counseling with a lot of the folks there and not knowing Spanish. Um, I had a translator and we really connected the universal language of love was really shown there. And you could see a lot of them, some people would be angry at what happened to them, but they weren't angry at all. They were, they were welcoming. They were heartbroken, but they were welcoming and full of love. Wow. Yeah. So, which brings me to, I didn't know when I was going to pop in a, you never know when I'm going to pop in a curiosity question or have a, a curiosity conversation. Right. Okay. Um, I think I'll just pop it in right now. Um, because, you know, I, th you know, and I, I just recently said this, I, I said to someone, um, if Puerto Rico, uh, St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, if they are, are a part of America, um, why is it that, uh, what's the holdup in regards to the kind of support that we should all be receiving, um, as Americans and what's, what's, what's the, what's the, the big deal on why we can't get support in these beautiful, beautiful areas of America. Uh, why can't we, why isn't there more support? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Lowe's. And when I was in Puerto Rico, they were asking that very same question. The, the, um, everybody there from the authorities to the people that were displaced with their homes to, um, people that in, in college educated folks that really didn't understand because it, it almost felt like they were, and they, how they described it in Spanish and in English, like they were orphans or, and they were not being accepted in the mainland in the United States. And that earthquake was completely devastating. And as you can, and they compared it to things that happened in Louisiana, some of the tragedies that happened in the, in the States that all the relief efforts that took place there um, they compared that to that, and I think that's why I wanted to go because I saw that. I I usually work with groups that are are in need, and when they when they came back um, from Puerto Rico, that group they were in need. They needed counseling services. That's what they wanted me to do. They wanted to promote their efforts to gather up donations, but they need counseling services. And 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 to my to this day, I still don't understand why there's a disconnect between. The most of the United States government and the countries that you just met, the states that you just mentioned, and the geographical areas. And but you saw it firsthand when you went to Puerto Rico that there were, at the time there wasn't a lot of federal help. At right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it's probably a conversation we need to have. And my wife and I, of course, I've been. I was in Puerto Rico. I toured. Uh, we played. Uh, won the CBA championship. And a gentleman who bought the Albany Patroons in my last year there uh, owned a resort, a tennis and golf resort in Puerto Rico. And when we won the championship, uh, we were there for two weeks at his resort. And we toured uh, all areas of Puerto Rico. We played against the Puerto Rican uh, uh, Olympic team as for as part of their warm up and preparation for the Olympics. You know, so, I mean, I've seen some beautiful things in, in Puerto Rico and I've seen some 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 rough places in, in Puerto Rico. And as well as my wife and I visited the uh, the St. Thomas Island, Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. and, and she was there. I don't know. My nose just started running, but uh, <laughs> um, we were she was there to speak 
uh, and St. Thomas and St. Croix in regarding in regards to um, the the deficiency of education within that in those areas. And we we got an opportunity to go to the, in those school districts. I mean, I've never I, it was one of the worst, you know, the the islands are beautiful. You know, when when you wake up in the morning, you think you're in heaven, you know, and, and then when we went we went to the schools, we were like, wow, man, this is this is not good. And um, yeah, so that, that's a that's a curiosity conversation that needs to be had. And, you know, I don't know how to have it, but I right. just thought I, I, I'd bring it up at this point. You know, no, it, it's a good point because um, it, it, it's a confusing time. And the video came together. There were some local folks there that that, that music was, uh, you know, at the time they created a song. And um, we were able to put some of the um, pictures to what we did to our efforts to the song. And it, it created um, additional funding and donation sources for people. Because when we came back from Puerto Rico, we had a big fundraiser March 14th of 2020. And we had Ricky Bird, who was the lead guitarist and Hall of Fame guitarist of Joan Jett and the Blackhawks, come down. We raised a lot of money and and got a lot of food donations and medical supplies to bring to Puerto Rico on March 14th. And then we all know what happened about 10 days later, um, the pandemic hit. So, yes. I and, and you know, it, it seems like a long, long time ago when I went to Puerto Rico, but those folks have been hit doubly when the pandemic hit because they were displaced and then the coronavirus uh, unfolded for the world. So I, I almost feel a little bit um, guilty not going back there because I connected with a lot of families and, and children that I often wonder how they're doing right now. Well, yeah, we need to talk about that because a good friend of mine I had on the podcast when I did the minister, Pastor Paul Sherrill, uh, has a has a ministry and in Puerto Rico. Um, so yeah, probably need to talk. We probably all need to get back over there. Yeah. And, and see what we can, um, what we can do. But I, I want to digress and, and, and talk a little bit about Steve. <laughs> so Steve, as you know, I got three important questions uh, that I have each week. And the, what is the, you know, talk about what is the importance of family? You, uh, you know, growing up, mom, dad, uh, you know, if they're siblings and then and then also the importance of education and for you, the importance of faith. So start with family and, you know, bring it, bring us up, go back and then bring us up to where you are right now. Yeah. So um, my my life started off kind of um, with great adversity. I um, as a, um, I had a younger brother, uh, Richie. Um, but when I was about four or five, my father had left and my mom um, didn't really cope with that leaving so well. So there was a, um, she had made a suicide attempt at that time at five years old. And I'm actually in the middle of writing a book. It's going to be called One Chapter at a Time, which kind of takes a look back at my life and how I got to this point. But at that moment, when my father had left abruptly and my mom was really struggling with that, she uh, apparently took an overdose of pills. And I can remember this in an apartment in, in Long Island, Island Park. And she fell to the floor and she started yelling and screaming and she was crying. She, she was in so much pain. That, this is actually my first memory that I, I can remember. And... And then she was yelling, since I was the oldest, Stephen, call 911. You know, she was crying out, mm. call 911. And I was five. <laughs> and mm. back then you had the um, the rotary phones, right? Yeah. You know? Definitely. So um, I never used the phone before, and she was crying and screaming. But I could feel a pain. My brother was crying. He was two years younger than me. And so he went into the next room, and I'm fumbling, trying to call <laughs> On the phone, and and I, I finally got the nine one one to work there. Well, they they responded, and what happened was sometimes 
back in, in the day there, you know, mental illness wasn't in the forefront of people's minds. So, you know, when the police showed up, they really weren't equipped or handled to, you know, focus on a crisis situation that with mentally health, a mental health crisis. Mm. Um, she, she became combative with the uh, police officers there. And at that moment, um, they took her away and they took my brother and I away uh, at that very moment. And um, reliving it, it, it's hard because that changed the focus of life forever because from there, I was um, in and out of different foster homes and shelters growing up. And I would always be reunited with my mom at times when she would get well. And that's uh, my mom at a, a wedding. And um, in that picture, she was she had, she had MS. And she really couldn't walk. Uh, somebody wheeled her to the dance floor. They wheeled her up there and, and propped her propped her up and I lifted her. We just stood there. We really didn't dance the first dance. This is uh, obviously a younger version of myself <laughs> and um, my mom in a wheelchair back then. My mom was uh, and still is everything to me. I, everything that I do is because I tried to live it through her eyes and I would try to, I would always want to switch places with her because she was in so much pain. And you brought up Marvin Gaye before, right? So um, she was a big Dinah Ross and the Supremes fan, and we would we would fight over the TV because she'd always want to watch Dinah Ross, and I always want to watch the Yankee game, and we'd fight over that. But it's ironic because when you bring up Marvin Gaye, him and Tammy Terrell did a version of "Ain't No Stopping Us," uh, um, "Ain't No Mountain High Enough." Yes. And and Tammy Terrell unfortunately succumbed at a young age to mental health issues, suicide, and, and it's sad. And then Marvin Gaye also died at a, at a, a young age as well. With, you talk about family. Mm -hmm. um, but, that, but I bring that up because she was a big Dinah Ross fan, and she sang a song called Missing You, Dinah Ross. Yes. Which was which for her friend Marvin Gaye. Mm. So if you listen to the words, it's all it's specifically for Marvin Gaye, that song. So I, I digressed a little bit, but um, I had a journey in the foster care system, in shelters. I was, you know, separated from my mom. I was separated from my brother at times. And you talk about family. I, I, that's one of the, my foster families that I, I lived with. This is mm. later in life. Those are my two daughters, uh, Gia, Giovanna, and then Angela to the left. Giovanna is the oldest one. Later in life, I got reacquainted with them and was able to um, have them meet my, my daughters. Wow. And so family to me was friends, and family to me was wherever I was, I created a, rela a loving relationship with whoever I was with. But I always felt this need to pay it forward and to create my own world because it was always taken away from me. So I felt if I created my own world, then I can um, be comforted by that. I can control that until the time was where I had to move on. But at least I felt like I was in control of the people I was around. It could be friends. It could be coaching or whatever it was. I, I everywhere I went and there was no cell phones, there was no nothing at that at that then and it was very important to have those friendships. So for me, friends have been family and friends are always just as family have been and without my friends, without the foster families that I've been involved with, I I would never be able to do the things that I'm doing today. Wow, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, I, you know, and as you know, on the blueprint, I mean, you know, uh, we kind of, if you think about it, if you're building something, you know, I'm living, my brother lives in this wonderful na neighborhood and, you know, when he first moved in, it was only a few houses here, right? And then each time we'd come down there, more and more houses, there's probably like 60, 70 houses, beautiful homes here, but, you know, before this, when my brother lived around the corner, when he first started at 
at Fort Bragg, and we used to come visit him in the trailer. And all this was woods. And so somebody had to have a a blueprint, you know. And as you know, with es you know, excavation is not easy. And and so you you have to create a blueprint, you know, in order to go a plan in order to go in there and excavate what's what's in the ground, find out what's in the ground, so forth and so on, get that stuff out of the ground so you can lay foundations. And you know, you being a clinical psychologist, right? You know, you know that people, uh, you know, in order to get, you know, you, you create what I consider is, you know, foundations. And sometimes foundations are not good, right. but yet so many people on the show have not had real good foundations laid. Yeah. Yeah. And so some, some, something happens, whether it's a coach, a teacher, you know, you know, extended family, they come and they help you. Now they, it could go the opposite way. Now they can, you can go into an environment, a situation where it, it could deepen, put you in a deeper, keep you in that foundation, man, that's, that's not positive. Or you can find yourself in a situation where somebody comes along and they start to excavate, you know, help you deal with uh, the things that have been laid in your foundation and until eventually you're able to see us have that space there where now you can create a new foundation. And, uh, you know, listening to you, you know, I could see that and where you are now, I can, I can, I can see, you know, that another foundation has been laid and now you're laying foundations right. or you're helping people to lay foundations. So, you know, from that, from that experience into, you know, the education and faith. Right. So um, I, because I bounced around so much, um, I, I ended up in Amityville High School, and that was my last stop there in high school. I moved in the middle of ninth grade. I remember I was living in uh, Port Jefferson, and I was going to uh, Comsawag out there. And I played baseball. And we had a team that went to the championship the year before. And the team that we came back with, and I, I, I had played varsity um, in that ninth grade, you know, as a sub. But towards the end, I was playing shortstop and I pitched. But and we had a, a great team. But when it came down to it, my mom got sick again. And I had to leave. And then I found myself leaving that team in the middle of the season and going to Amityville. Mm. And I couldn't, it was too late. I couldn't play at, at, that, at that time. And, again, it was, you know, being separated from my mom. But I remember it was in June or something. I went down to the basement of this, the home that I was living at. And remember the old cable boxes with the brown box and with the wire and the different channels and stuff? I was. I got home. I was, <laughs> yeah, I, I do was, remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I, <laughs> yeah. was, I was flipping through the channels, and I saw this this team that was playing upstate New York in the finals, and it was the team that I was on. So it was a team, and there was a new guy playing shortstop because I wasn't there anymore. Wow. So it was it was an eye open. I was happy for them, but I was very sad. But at that moment. I realized I again I had to create my own world around me. So I started to coach Little League. I started writing for the town paper. I wrote for the school paper. I, I played baseball. I even wrestled. And I had a, I have a friend that may even pop on later. His name is Dave Grafstein, and he was a wrestler. And he became my friend right away. And we connected in a big big way. And he kind of introduced me to different people in Amityville and I got to, I wrestled and I wasn't as good as him, but it kept me in shape for baseball. And, and together we have a, a lifetime friendship. And now I'm happy to say he has a show on the network called flashback sports with Gil, Gil Casenza. And he does wow. a great job with it. And it, it reminds me because I, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say how long ago was it 40 years ago. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, those those years add up, you know. So, um, but if it wasn't 
for people like Dave coming along the way, a friend and a family, um, then that, that was very important. At the time, I, I learned a work ethic. I really think God was with me the whole time because I, I went to different homes, but there were different religions in each home. I never felt comfortable with any of the religions, with the families that they went to. But right. I, always, I always talked to God on my own. I always prayed on my own. And I think God always looked out for different things that I did. And I, I just had faith in him. And from that day on, I, I always I always had hope. You pick a picture, I like hope. So <laughs> I, I, I developed, I always had to be busy. So I played sports. I worked 40 hours a week. I wrote for the paper. I coached. I had a girlfriend at the time. And so I always created my own world. And then work ethic was just something I did. And then education, <clears throat> I just knew I needed to go to college. I knew I had to go to college. No one ever told me. So I, I education was very important to me. That's my grandfather. Um, you know, you talk about Independence Day. And um, he, he would travel and find out the different foster homes that I was in. And back yes. then, you're not, you're not supposed to, the, the biological family is not supposed to know where you live in these foster homes. But he found, he found me and, and my brother each and every time. And that, if you pop that picture back in, Carmine, that picture is from Stony Brook. And when he graduated, uh, my undergraduate degree, and, and probably, I mean, he's a World War II veteran. So we talk about Independence Day. He mm. sacrificed for his family. And I learned all the family values from him, even though I was never as – I followed through like he did. He's a great man. He was a saint. But he gave everything he had to for his family, and he instilled that in me into creating the family that I've had over the years. So um, my grandfather, who passed away, um, was everything to me. And so I knew education was important. I had gone to Stony Brook. I – didn't, uh, you know, I had like a, a 3.4 GPA. And then from there, I went to Queens College. I always believed in the SUNY and CUNY schools. So I went to Queens College in, in Queens and Flushing. And that's where I got a, a dual um, master's degree in, in uh, psychology and education and school psychology. And I went on to in, in Maryland, the University of Maryland. And I worked, uh, uh, I went to finish my schooling there. And then I worked at Johns Hopkins Hospital for a number of years and I did a lot of work there. So so work ethic <clears throat> and, and education was always something I knew I had to do and, and things that it just came to me. And thank goodness <clears throat> and the grace of God that I believe God provided that path for me yeah. um, in every way. Because, you know, you talk about... Um, you know, people feeling sorry for themselves. I never really felt sorry for myself. I just believed in who I was and what I was doing because I was helping others. And there was a lot of really great people on my way that came. But God and faith was always there. So I am, uh, to this day, I look back on, on my grandfather and my mom, and they're with me every single day. Yeah, and I, you know, one of one of the uh, young men that I had on my show, I think you would remember uh, Zion Clark. Right? Yeah, and and I remember asking him a question about, you know, born with born with no legs, you know, if he was ever angry, if he ever gets mad or angry with God, you know, and I was surprised when he said, "Oh no," you know, I, I've learned to use what I have, you know, and 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 for all of us that uh you know we we're not dealt great hands right but i i, I want to commend you for perseverance you know for not giving up and uh because like i said earlier you, you can go another way you know there's a, you can you know you can stay in the mess in the foundation that was laid or you can you know kind of try to excavate that foundation and that's what you do when people come along and help you to excavate when you go to school and do the things that you're supposed to do right and and graduate you that's the excavation process i mean yes. those those thoughts 
uh, or those experiences or those traumas are still there. But the more you, the more you, you know, you excavate, the more you get the education and, and start to do the things that you're doing right now, um, it, it makes it, it makes it your life more, more prosperous, you know? And so I want to, I appreciate you for, for, for that. And, you know, what about, uh, you know, what about, uh, is there a love of the life, love of your life? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a beautiful wife, um, Wanda, and right. um, that's, uh, you were in Florida there, and that, that symbol is um, the autism, the autism symbol and pieces of the puzzle. So um, we have a, a granddaughter that Alyssa that is um, a nonverbal um, suffering from autism. So that's mm. Alyssa. Now, I, it is a challenge to get the services that in general for people that are struggling with autism, but when you're nonverbal, it's even more of a channel, a challenge to, to help. But um, Wanda has been a major, major force in my life. And I, I, I am, uh, that's our wedding picture. Yeah, I like that. And, uh, that's in uh, the Jericho Terrace in, in New York. And um, she's been an incredible support. And she comes from, she's from the Dominican. And she mm -hmm. comes from a, a really close, tight-knit family. And she, she's a twin, and she moved here in when she was nine years old. Her mom died at a young age. So just like a lot of families um, from different countries, when they come to the United States, they're divided from their families. But her family has always taken me in and been just like a, a family um, always by my side. And I, I, I love them dearly, and, and that's uh, – that's just recently. That's a couple of days ago. You know, you wow. know, it's important. It's important to enjoy life. You know, something yeah. it's been a journey for me. So sometimes I haven't been able to at, at a good place to rest. To just kind of sitting on a rocking chair. You know, like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Take it in. You know, but you have to be reminded that life is short, and this pandemic has really hit people hard and we lost lives we lost families. And, and i i really have a, a better appreciation of immediate family and extended family and i can't i'm so very blessed to have uh wanda in my life and and our children i have uh, my oldest daughter giovanna uh, she just got married uh two years ago wow this beautiful. picture this is one of my favorite pictures of all time because this is right before I walked Gia down the aisle. Gia's uh, Giovanna Rose and my other daughter Angela. But we had a moment right before we went into the church, and and uh, Gia got a little nervous then, and we prayed right then, right after that picture. Somebody took that picture, and the three of us prayed before you know we did the the beautiful ceremony and had a great day. But that picture. Um, you know when you when you go through uh, when you go through life and you have the different challenges, I would do it all again to have a moment like that. Yeah. It was all worth it to have that moment because that was for me that was God saying, Steve, this is where you belong. This is it, and you 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 passed every test to get to that point, no matter what the road was. Yeah. So that's the that's the best picture I could you know I could ever see for myself. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Because we're we're coming up on uh, what thirty, uh, thirty eight, thirty nine years of marriage, and and uh, tomorrow will be my oldest daughter's uh, second wedding anniversary. Oh. And and in the midst of that, I end up with you saw earlier with Dakota. <laughs> you know my grandson and and so i live i live for family right and and uh and then she's due again in in uh in november right so i'll have you know two grandkids and then my 
my youngest daughter is getting married in June of next year. Um, so everybody's here, you know, every, every, everybody's uh, down here now. So family is so important, so special, man. And I, I have to say it again. I, maybe I could say, it, I don't know. I'll say it and I really mean it for more, right? More than once. Uh, I've said it tw once already, but I commend you on, on the, the things that you've done to support me at the Boys and Girls Club and Mel Campos and, and the club itself and the young people. And then, you know, the issues or topics um, in regards to uh, special needs. I mean, I have a, a special needs son, you know, Isaiah, and the things that you do in, in regards to that. So I commend you on, on, those, on those things. I commend you on on this life that you have, uh, you know, a didn't didn't start out great, but look what you, along with God, has has turned it into, and mm -hmm. that's and that's very powerful, and that's why I wanted to have you on, man. I mean, because you know your story. There's a lot of hurting people out there, right? Right, and people need to know. Uh, you know, my friend said to me during the pandemic, right? We can't go in the church. Right. He said, you can't go into church, you know, because of the pandemic. He said, but you can be the church. Right. Right. You know, and I thank you for being the church. Right. right? Well, <laughs> and, and you know what, Lowe's, it, it, two things I want to bring up. Um, you, you've had um, guests for, in, throughout your year that talked about the relationship with their father and things. I know you talked about the Father's Day. My father had left. I found out later in life he was incarcerated. In Iowa and I actually I was 17 I was in Amityville actually and I got a letter he spelled my name wrong he spelled it s-t-e-p-h-e-n instead of with the v <laughs> yeah so I'm saying let me oh let me check this out I mean this is like really <laughs> so um, I got a plane ticket to Iowa to see him and to kind of let set him straight you know that you know I'm doing this this and this my mother overcame this this and this and, and how dare you, yada, yada, yada. Well, let me tell you, God was with me that day because, uh, to make a long story short, when I finally got in there to see him, he had a different name. It was a long story to get there. But when I got in there, I was full of rage at 17. When I got into this room, I saw this broken down man, totally broken down and very sickly looking. And I went, I know God was like, it took all that anger away. It went, it just went totally out of me. And I felt compassion for him. And I was able to learn a little bit about him. And um, to make a long story short, he had passed away five years later at the age of 44. The same age Marvin Gaye passed away, right? He right. Was, he was yeah. 44. So it's interesting how you brought up Marvin Gaye earlier. But yeah. when I came back, I tell that story because sometimes when people make bad decisions or poor decisions, doesn't mean they don't hurt. And anybody, like we could talk about Father's Day or Mother's Day, but there's a lot of people separated from their children in ill walks of life. And let me tell you, that could be the most painful situation that anybody has to go through, not to be with their children on a regular basis. So. Mm. I, it's a topic that I've covered on my shows and different shows over the years. And I want to always remember that, I mean, anger doesn't get us anywhere. I mean, it's about healing and finding out how we got to this path. So I wanted to tell that story because I, I know that you deal with a lot of um, people that talk about their relationship with their father, good or bad. But it could right. be motivating and it motivated me to be the father I am, no matter if it's good or bad, your upbringing, you're going to learn from that. You know, just like in baseball or basketball, like you take free throws. All right, it's okay if you if you shoot 95 percent free show uh, free throws that are, that are, you know making it through. But that five percent, you're going to learn more from the time you're missing. You know how you're going to work <laughs> through that. And That's in right. baseball, in baseball. If you get three hits out of 10, you're batting 300, you're making the Hall of Fame if you do that over 20 years. But there's seven times where, you know, you're failing. That's so right. We have, to, 
we have to remember those times. If you want to talk about sports like that, we have to remember those times where people struggle and fail and trying to turn things around. And mm -hmm. because my, my, if my father was incarcerated, he didn't have that opportunity. So right. I, I'm thankful that I had resolution and I didn't voice that anger, but that was God. That took God took that anger away from me because I was I was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. And so uh, we're gonna digress again and 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 uh, jump into and have some pop up guests. Uh, we want to talk about the chapters wrap. I mean, how did it? it how did it do this? Its inception. Hold it for and anybody that wants to. You know, this is interactive. So if you have a guess uh, or a question for for Steve or a comment, you you could just type it in, and and uh, you know, if there's a question, we'll we'll try to answer either one of us. If it's for Steve, he'll answer it for me. But Lo, the, if it's a basketball question, I got it. Okay. Uh, okay, you got the basketball. <laughs> so 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 talk to me about the inception of. The chapters wrap and then all the things that you're doing uh and how it's arrived to here and then you have some pop-up people i will be want to pop them on and 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 have a discussion with them all right so as, as a kid that that's my first day um doing the show that's eight years ago and it was radio and basically when i grew up i bounced around a lot and i used to have this little transistor radio that always came with me so I didn't watch TV or I couldn't watch TV. So I had, I had this radio that I like a lot of stories. They put it on the pillow and late at night, I used to get a kick of listening to all the, the baseball games from different states, you know, like the Indian games or the Tiger games. Right. Yeah. So I'd always like move around the radio so I could listen to it. And so I always loved talk radio. I always loved talk radio. <clears throat> my, my, my two for TV, my two role models, and uh, when Dave comes on, were Johnny Carson, because he was a great interviewer, but also Phil Donahue, because mm. Phil Donahue had this radio show, but on live NBC at 4 o'clock every day, he would take on all these controversial topics, and he would always say, is a caller there? And he would run around <laughs> the studio with the microphone, getting wanting to get people's feelings and, and, and thoughts. So right. I always liked that. So I said, one day I want to do that. So basically, eight years ago, I started to do that. The chapter's rap name, I'm a psychologist, so I believe in stages in our life, different chapters in our life. Rap just means to talk about it, to talk right. about those stages. So through the years, it's evolved, and, and we, I've been able to do syndicated shows. I moved it to TV. We got some, uh, we're on, we're on um, Fios Cablevision. Optimum Cable Vision, uh, Spectrum, and BronxNet. We have 15 different shows now. My theme song has been Love Train by the OJs. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so the, that's a train. Get so on the love train. There we go. Love train. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So we're waiting for the love train to take out there. So my, one of my bucket lists is to meet the OJs and interview oh. them. So if you could hook me up, Lowe's, I need help. I got to get to the OJs, you know, so OJs. Yeah, yeah, old school. So, <laughs> so anyway, that, that, and I do a show with Ray Negron called Reach Out with Ray and Steve. And mm -hmm. Ray, Ray has been a great friend. And that, <clears throat> my relationship with him, he's been with the Yankees for over 45 years. Real quick. He was a kid, 17 Growing up in the Bronx, he was spray painting graffiti in Yankee Stadium. He got caught. He got arrested. But George Steinbrenner, who just bought the Yankees in 73, took him out of jail, brought him up to his office, read him the riot act, but made him a Yankee bat boy that day. So for 47-plus years, he's been with the Yankees. He's written five books. He's been in movies. He's been in plays. And I got to meet him <clears throat> at Suffolk Community College, and I interviewed him one time. A couple of years back, and after that, we became fast friends, and we do this show, Reach Out with Ray and Steve. Yeah. And he's Great, Great up show. Door. Yeah. He's opened up the doors for me to meet so many people. This guy, you talk about Hope Week with the Yankees. It's beautiful what they do, right? Hope Week, but Hope Week with the Yankees is only one week out of the whole year. Ray Negron does it every single day of his life, and that's right. dedicated to that. And he – lives in George Steinbrenner. Whatever George Steinbrenner did to him, 
he continues to pay it forward in a big way. He's allowed me into the world of so many people. So I'm totally indebted to Ray Negron. He's a great friend. And uh, we do a show called Bat Boy. Carmine, who does the board tonight, is he plays Little Ray in the play. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when Carmine doesn't do this stuff, he's actually acting and he does a great job. And Carmine's a great kid. But it, during the pandemic, we had to reinvent ourselves. How I reinvented myself, I went from one show to 15 shows. That's one mm. show with uh, Stephanie McPhail, Kicking Healthy Relationships. Then we started to talk. We did shows. We did work together at the Boys and Girls Club in Mount Vernon. That's Ashley Blum. She just had a one-year anniversary doing her show, Teen Talk. And she's uh, she's only 16 years old. And and Dads and Daughters, that's uh, Mike Dempsey and his, and his daughter, Kelly Dempsey, who is, is on the spectrum, and they do a show, Dads and Daughters. And it's a beautiful relationship to see a father and a daughter give back in such a big way. So everybody, that's Mariana Lynn. She's 12 years old. She does the show. Wow. She's from Florida. So to me, everything that I've been doing in life, it all comes back to my relationship with my mom, my friends, and God, and family. And to me, it's just a, an easy thing to give it back to other people. Man, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you was quick, Steve. Yeah, I know. I know, I know how this goes. I know well, this show ends at 830. I got to talk yeah. fast. Yeah, so uh, who do you want to pop on first? Right, let's get Dave Grafstein. I see he's backstage. Let's get Dave because he's got to validate Dave. or disprove some of the things I said. Yeah. All right, Dave. Stop validating or disproving. <laughs> <laughs> What's Boy, up, Dave? How you doing? I don't know who he's talking about. I'm doing well. How are you, folks? <laughs> Great, I am great. Good. No complaints. You. Nice to meet you too. You and I actually crossed paths years ago. I just didn't know it because I was uh, I'm an Albany grad and I was at Albany while you were at the Patroons. Um oh, back nice. in the early eighties. Yeah, so yeah. I was uh, at the armory. Um oh, a number of yeah, times. I remember that place. I think I think you I, I think you were there for were you there for Phil Jackson and George Carl? I was there, for, there both. For, for both of them. More for Phil than I was George. Okay. Yeah, uh, four okay. years with Phil. Gotcha. Did you see? Year, did you see that George. coming? Okay. Which one? Did you see Phil? that coming with um, Phil Jackson being a, a Hall of Fame NBA coach? I didn't see him becoming a Hall of Fame NBA coach, but I I could tell you this: I, I wanted to see him in the NBA because he was a player's coach. You would love to play for Phil Jackson. I mean, he yeah. he keeps it straight, and he allows you to be you. Right. Yeah, yeah I, can, I, can, I can imagine that. As far as Steve is concerned, I don't know the kid he's talking about. There was completely, he was a uh, scam <laughs> artist. Nah, he, Steve, uh, you know, actually, I'm, it's bringing back some memories of you talking about your, uh, your mom and dad. I, I, actually, I can still remember when you got that letter and when you went to uh, see your father in, in prison. That was a tough time. And um, Steve's very humble also about his athletic ability because he's he was a terrific baseball player. He doesn't talk about it much, but... Uh, uh, he was probably the best player on our team, and I got to I got to catch Steve as an excellent pitcher, twelve to six curveball if I remember well. Steve, um, some of them didn't always get to my glove, uh, but uh, <laughs> but he was he was all we had, low, so, so he, he was excellent. But yeah, he he, uh, he doesn't really even uh, begin to do it justice in terms of what he overcame as a uh, you know from you know, from five years old on. It's unbelievable. So. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing to see uh, just even the ability to even have the uh, the wherewithal to kind of get through the years he did, um, those formative years, go to college, give back like he's been doing for decades now. It's awesome. And to see um, all these shows that he puts on right now, these young people too, it's, it's incredible. So um, yeah. I appreciate really with both of you guys, loves what you do for the Boys and Girls Club in Mount Vernon. There, there can be nothing more important than that. So. We have a, a great uh, club up here as well in Stanford, in Stanford, Connecticut. And I see what okay. you guys do. Oh, um, awesome club, yeah. Um, you're probably familiar with it. Yeah, it's, it's um, like I said, it's, it's it's an unbelievable part of the community. Yeah. Well, Dave, and, and, and Dave I, I got it. I mean, I talked about it earlier. I don't know how long you've been watching, but you're a really important person in my life because, you know, you, it was the last stop for me, bounced around and, and I really lost faith in, you know, at times getting that really true friend. And, you know, you didn't know at the time, but you came along at just at the right time. And 
I remember, you know, we would do things together and we had our girlfriends, we did our thing. And, uh, but then you told me about wrestling and I just followed suit to what you were saying. And we would talk about Johnny Carson and, and let him in all the time and sports. And I can't tell yeah. you, um, you, you, that friendship was so critical to me and to see you now <coughs> doing the show flashback sports, you know, and something that I'm doing is pretty crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah. Both 40 yeah. years later. It's amazing the time the time goes that crazy. I didn't know you had this man crush on Phil Donahue, though. Where'd that come from? That was like, that was out of the blue. <laughs> yeah. I think you could hear Phil Donahue and the OJs in the same sentence about, uh, you know, you know your, like, your where heroes. did it come that's, from, right? Yeah, right. That's, that's some real diversity right there. But yeah, no, we had, we had, we had a lot, we had great times. It was, uh, uh, you know, we were such big sports fans. We were, you know, we had, you know, the Yankees are the common denominator. We played baseball and wrestled together. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, and then you don't see people for decades. And then right. you, you, you start talking again, like you, you know, like you had in like 10 minutes, right? Right, yeah. right. I remember back in the day, we, you know, we would like during the trade, you know, the trading deadline for baseball, you know, we would have to put in our quarters or dimes to go on pay phone to get on sports phone to see who was traded for who. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. And then they'd always leave you hanging, right? Like, pull back in two minutes to find this out. And then, I had no more quarters. I got no exactly. more. <laughs> you know? Oh, How sad is this, Steve? 9761313 was the number. Yeah, right, af right. After that, when I was in, you know, uh, in my twenties, I was calling up every ten minutes because I had to bet on a game. Typically, I wanted to get the right. score. So, and yeah, I think I, I think I spent more money on the score than I did. Twenty minutes ago, right? Uh, and then, and then now you have this. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's exactly. like in real time. You could just pick it up, and it's in real time. You, it, it they won't even let right? you forget that something happened. <laughs> right. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. But Dave, Dave, Dave's a great guy. He gives back himself too. Over the years, he's supported different efforts that I've been involved with and to this day, Dave, you know, I love you like a brother, man. Thank you for taking the time Same. to call yeah. here and uh, I, I look forward to your show. It's kind of like a, a little mini WFAN kind of thing, what you guys got going on with you and Gil. You having fun doing it? Uh, we, we love it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Lowe's, it's like it, we are um, we're not part of, we're probably a few years apart, but Gil and I um, are in our late 50s and we're we're big on kind of the retro sports, um, 70s and 80s. So kind of right in your wheelhouse. So maybe if uh, Steve can negotiate on our behalf, we can get you on because that's that's kind of our, our wheelhouse that that era of uh, when you were uh, uh, playing for uh, the Nets and the Patroons. And uh, um, you know, we'd love to have you on and talk uh, talk oh, yeah. talk and, about uh, that, that era. I was just thinking. I said I'm gonna have to check out the flashback. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to check it out because you know I, people don't. People, you, you might like it's it good. It's good that you have it, right? Because I guess they're tired of hearing me say, you know, when they talk about players today, and they're tired of hearing me say, "Well, you had to be back here." You know, you can't put that guy in the top ten because you haven't seen this guy play. He, you know, so I got to go to the flashback. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, I look yeah, forward to it. Like, you know. We have our opinion based on you know from thirty thousand feet, but you know to talk to somebody who is who can uh, who was there and played against these guys and played. Um, I, I think you were drafted what seventy nine, seventy eight, somewhere along those lines. Oh, no, uh, earlier than that. Nineteen eighty, yeah, nineteen eighty. I got drafted. Yeah, so yeah, so you played with a lot of those guys and against a lot yeah. of those guys, so you can uh, you know, speak first. Yeah. We're making it up as we go, so you can kind of give shed some light on that. Sure. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got you got to call into yeah, their absolutely. show, Lowe's, and you got as a guest. Dave, okay, man, thank you. That'd be fun. And so I think Steve right, got guys. some more pop on. Yep. Thanks, Dave. You. Appreciate you. Thanks. Happy Independence you Day, Dave. Happy well. Independence Day. I love you, brother. Why don't you bring on Tony? Tony. <laughs> What's up, Tony? Hey, gentlemen. How is everybody? Oh, good. we're good. I, you see, I, you asked me that question. I'm like, <laughs> I know you're good. I know you. Actually, I know you're both good. I, I've been sitting back, um, enjoying this conversation. You two make me feel like when I was a little girl. I have an uncle. Um, I have an uncle. My, one of my favorite uncles, because I can't say my favorite uncle. That's why I got tongue tied because I know they'll all be listening to this eventually, right? <laughs> one of my one of my favorite uncles uh, worked in a barber shop, and occasionally he would take me down to the barber shop, and uh, I was a be seen and not a not heard kind of girl. And 
you know, your conversation just really resonated with me. Like it took me back to those days in the barbershop where I get to 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 sit and be a fly on the wall and listen to you know uh, old folks talk some wonderful things, you know. And of course, when they saw a little kid in the corner, they would keep it clean, you know. Not that I would ever have to worry worry about that, right. with gentlemen. But yeah, it, it's fantastic. I, I want some of that fish, uh, Lowe's. I, I'm hopping <laughs> in my car, keep my plate warm. It takes a few hours to get there, as you know. But yeah. And also, Tony, since you, this reminds you of being in a barber shop, next time I see, you, can I cut your hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know about that. No, no. <laughs> And, and I didn't know I didn't know whether I should feel uh, feel good or feel old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got that rocking chair thing going on. You look pretty comfortable there. Man, really comfortable. I, it's my I don't have one, <laughs> but I actually love rocking chairs uh -huh. since I, since I was a little kid. I don't have one, but uh, every time I, you know the time I sit in the rocking chair is when I go to what's what's the name of that restaurant. Um, they have them sitting out front. Like oh, the benches. Um, what's the name of it? Oh, I, like I, I, I love I love the pancakes. I mean, oh, um, IHOP. Oh, IHOP. Not IHOP. They don't have no rocking chairs out. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, what down south like? Oh, oh, Cracker Barrel. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Somebody just Cracker Barrel. Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Barrel. And, and I, I have uh, I, my wife just bought me for Father's Day a WVU golf bag. Beautiful, you know, blue and gold. I got the hat, the shirt. Now I'm looking for the pants. I'm looking for the clubs, you know, the club holders, the covers in WVU. Man, look, and if I get me a WVU rocking chair, you know, I'll be good. I'll be good. Well, I, I, I'm just so happy you didn't fall asleep on me, Lowe's, when I was talking, you know, in that rocking chair. <laughs> no, I'm not. Although it's pretty nice out here. If I was just yeah. sitting here and nobody was saying anything to me, I could fall asleep. My wife was in the back. She was in the back early a couple of days ago. And I was like, where's uh, where's Trees head? And, and and they said, oh, she went out to the porch. I, lo I looked out on the porch. She was knocked out. I mean, just, I was like, that's what that's what this does. I mean, you know, this kind of atmosphere does this to you, you know, but, Wow. Wow. That's yeah. Great. So, well, so Tony, thank you for uh, chiming in today. Well, well, thank you. Thank you both on, on a serious note. It, it is, it's an honor and a pleasure to share the platform, you know, with, 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 with you both. Um, I have such a high amount of respect for, for both of you, you know, Steve, um, you know, we've had many conversations and I wrote down three quotes. So belabor me for about three minutes while I read these quotes, because I wrote them down because I didn't want to botch them up. Because Steve, you, you don't really talk much about yourself. So it was a pleasure to sit here and listen to you talk a little bit about, you know, what you do and what you've done in the community and what you continue to do for people. And um, one of my favorite quotes, I know you always start to sh your show with affirmations and I'm big on affirmations, I'm big on quotes. So I had to dig two of these quotes up. One of them I almost know by heart because I know the beginning. I say it to myself almost every day. And this to me is the embodiment of speed, which goes work for a cause, not for applause. Live life to express and not to impress. Don't strive to make your presence noticed. Just make your absence felt. So that's one quote that I say to myself a lot, especially the first the first line, work for a cause and not, not applause. And, that is the embodiment of you, Steve. You you do what you do for people. You have such a heart for people. Um, you know, there's a phrase that goes, seeds don't always sprout where they're planted. And you have planted seeds all over this world, all over Long Island, all over everywhere you've gone. And and your seeds sprout, and they don't always sprout when you plant them, you know, and but they're but 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 they're always nurtured. I I believe by that love of which they go into the ground or they go into a person. They go into to something. Like people have sprouted. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. They've actually planted seeds in you, and in the seeds that are in you, they have sprouted and become all of these wonderful relationships and, and 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 people that you know and that you know that that you help and that you continue to to just love on. You know, we're in the Olympic season, and I think about you know we we, we champion. And you know, congratulations to that 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 uh, young man from from uh, you know Mount Vernon that is going to the Olympics, and I, I love the Olympics. You know, we cheer them on, and we see 
the fruition of all their hard work. And that was what yesterday meant for me, uh, watching, seeing a mile marker come and some of your hard work come into to fruition. And, you know, this smile and the joy, despite your challenges that you've gone through, that you speak on, you know, makes me think of this other, you know, the other quote, one of the quotes I wrote down, which said that some of the happiest people on earth are the people that do the most for other people. And I believe that that is where a lot of your joy and your happiness comes from. Actually, both of you gentlemen, because you do so much for other people and nobody has to do anything for anyone, but it's in your DNA and it's just in your genes to do. And, you know, I think we all heard a little bit tonight um, as to what the motivation behind you doing what you do for people, but, you know, you're genuine, you're hardworking, you make it look effortless. You know, I think about yesterday and if everybody knew and understood what goes on behind the scenes before we see the things that we see, um, you know, maybe you have a deeper appreciation. I know they all have appreciation, but you'd have a deeper appreciation for what, you know, what, what you do. And, um, you know, I think one of the most important things that we can do in this world is just to make sure that people don't, people know that they're not alone. And, you know, if there was one thing I could sum up about you, Steve, is you make sure that all those individuals that you come across, that you make them believe and know you're not in this alone. You're not alone. You got at least one person out here who's going to champion you and help you and never forget you and love on you. So, you know, Independence Day, happy Independence Day, gentlemen. Um, you know, I wish you all, you know, the best. Be safe. You know, I love what you said, Lowe's, about family because family is everything. And, you know, family's not always your blood. You know, so, you know, I definitely admire both of you and, and, and consider you, you know, extended members of, of my family. So enjoy. That's that's, that's all I got for you. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Tony. Tony, can you see this on my sleeve here? Oh, my goodness. I thought it looked familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we, we, we have unfinished business, Tony. We do. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take care of that unfinished business together. We we're going to bring back a club to Hempstead. Lowe's is going to help us. We're going to make this happen, and, and uh, you're a true blessing, and together, and with everybody else, we got some momentum yesterday, so God bless you and what you do. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. All thank right. you, thank you, thank you. So you want, you got a couple more, you want to bring both on? Yeah, they're on together, I think. This is uh, Tyler Giancetta and Ashley Blum. They are near and dear to me. They both have shows. Ashley has Team Talk. And, and Tyler co-hosts the show with Rachel Barcelona called You Heroes. And Ty, I think Tyler and, and Ashley are here. Uh, there they go. Woo! Hey! 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 Uh, how you guys doing? Yeah. yeah. Good. How are you guys? Oh, we are great, good. Great, great. Good. These guys, oh, my God. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is what I do. This Again, if God gave me all that uh, problems back then, it's because I had to come to the end to see these two people along with every other people. My, these guys warm my heart all the time. When I when I ask them to do something, they're always there, and I, I can't thank them enough with their families and everything we've created. I love you guys so very much. Yeah. Oh, I love you, Tyler, Ashley. Yeah, it looks like you guys get ready to sing something for us. I don't know. We are. We, are. we have our, our signature song. Oh, uh, that's uh, awesome. Without You by the band Ashes Remain. Uh, and it's a fun on, uh, she insisted on this particular song. Yes. Uh, I think right. largely because uh, her name is Ashley and the band is called Ashes Remain. Oh, okay. Well, do your thing. It's a running joke. It, it's, it's a running gag. It's, <laughs> it's a running gag. <laughs> But really, this is one that we really love to sing. Okay, let's hear it. November sky away as the pages of my life roll by away for you I'm so desperate just to see your face 
Meet me in this broken place. Hold me now. I need to feel you. Show me how. Make it new again. There's no one I can run to. And nothing I could ever do. I'm nowhere if I'm here. Without you, oh, 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 oh. even if you take it all away, I'll wait for you. Even when the light begins to fade, I'll wait. I'm so desperate calling out your name. Meet me in this broken place. Call me now. I need to feel you. Show me how to make it new again. There's no one I can run to. And nothing I could ever do. Oh no. Here. I'm tired of running and wrestling with these angels. I lay down my life and I surrender. Oh, only now I need to feel you. Show me how to make it through again. There's no one I can run to. And nothing I could ever do. Oh, now I need to feel you. Show me how to make it feel again. There's no one I can run to. And nothing I could ever do. Oh, no. I'm here without you. Awesome, Tyler, Ashley, awesome. Hey, can we put back up the, the shots we had of their show? And Steve, can you tell them when the show comes on? Oh, yes, yes. Well, Ashley, Ashley show, uh, Teen Talk with Ashley Blum, every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time at 6 p.m. And right after that, the Youth Heroes show with Tyler Giancetta and Rachel Barcelona, every 30, Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30 uh, PM Eastern Standard Time. They do back-to-back -back shows every Thursday night. So you got to check these guys out. They're wonderful. They're inspiration for everybody, not just young people, older people. I get inspired just by watching them yeah. each and every time. That was awesome, man. Hey, keep up the great work. Thank right. you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Edutainment. Yeah. Edutainment. <laughs> I like that. Edutainment. <laughs> Edutainment. Love you guys so Love much. Love you guys, man. Fourth of July. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. So I know we had a couple of pictures before we get off here. We had a couple of pictures of Steve and I. Okay. And we was doing some. Oh, there. Oh, there we go. Look, you're you're a legend in Mount Vernon. I had to get a picture. You know, you get your next, you know, gear on there with the short, short shorts there. And uh, Mount <laughs> Vernon, you are a legend in Mount Vernon. And when I got to meet you for the first time at the Boys and Girls Club in Mount Vernon with Mel Campos. It was uh there we go. That was like the very first time we got together. We helped yes. out. We did a show. We brought in a couple of singers and we raised some money for you guys. And I, I that was a great moment. And that made our friendship that took off because I I uh, I've always supported you. You've supported me. You have a wonderful book. We're gonna do a book tour this summer with some key people. Yes. And uh, after the show, I'm gonna read the book again. From okay. The to the NBA. I can't get enough of it. All right. <laughs> well, Steve, hey, we at that time, and you know, I want to say thank you, man. I enjoyed this. We've been trying to get this show out, right? I think we missed two times. You know, it was yeah. a, a funeral one time, and yeah. then another incident. 
uh but we finally got it in right i couldn't wait we made it happen i want to say thank you Lord, for all your support of the blueprint right and uh all you guys carmine anthony charlie all you guys for your support of of the blueprint podcast and and uh i want all of you to enjoy the rest of the holiday man and, and eat as much as you want you can diet later all right <laughs> I, I want some fried fish there and stop ducking me all right come to long island come bring it all right yeah you don't want that oh yes i do <laughs> bring it all right so again thank you very much for your support of the blueprint podcast man i love you guys man and i look forward to seeing you each and every week enjoy the holidays happy independence day happy fourth of july and I love you guys, and God bless you. God bless, Lowe's. God bless. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr., as always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the kitchen, it's a joke, I ain't buying it like-